Hello, everybody. Welcome to this DMU live stream. We're so glad that you could join us from all over the world to hear more about DMU and our faculty in particular. My name is Sarah Jones. I'm Deputy Dean in the Faculty of Computing, Engineering and Media. I'm so excited um, that we also have two of our postgrad students or, or recent students um, joining us, Phil and Saeed. And then together over the next 40 minutes, minutes or so, we hope to give you lots of information about our faculty, about studying at DMU, about Leicester, about our offer for postgraduate and international students. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll be able to give you all that information. But as with any live stream, you can, of course, interact with us and we want you to interact with us. Um, if you look on the screen, you'll be able to drop us a comment um, or a question in the chat box. Um, so just click it open and chat away and we'll come to those as they come in and we'll be able to answer any questions at the end. To get you started and to make sure that we don't think we're the only ones talking here on our screens, it'd be really, really great if you can pop in your name, maybe where you're, um, where you are at the moment and the course that you're interested in. Somebody earlier was on a call and they told me to pop in the emoji um, that best represents my day. So that's a good one as well. So maybe you want to pop in an emoji that really tells us about what you've been doing today so far. So please do take that time right now and then sit back and listen. Um, so first of all, I'm going to get everyone to introduce themselves. Like I said, I'm Sarah. I'm Deputy Dean in our faculty. Um, Philip, do you want to go first? Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you were studying. Yes, hello. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, my name's Philip. I'm originally from Leicester. Uh, I am a bachelor's and postgraduate graduate um, in film studies. I had three years studying film and then I went on to do the international film production course here at DMU. And I graduated from that May of last year is when my course finished um, and kept, into con kept in contact with you guys at DMU and my tutors ever since. So uh, yeah, that's who I am. We really like to do that. We want to make sure that once once you've started, once you've become a DMU student, you never really leave, um, which is really, really great. So it's great to have you back as well. Um, and I'm sure we'll be able to hear a lot about your experiences, um, both through undergrad and through postgrad. Yeah. Um, Saeed, would you like to introduce yourself? Um, hello, everybody. I'm Saeed from Nigeria. I'm an international student. I'm doing my postgraduate studies in intelligence systems and robotics. Um, so far, I've really had a nice time at DMU and I really, I'm looking forward to going for my PhD here at DMU because of the nice time I have. It's really a fun place to be in. Like I said, once you start, we never let you go. So that's great to hear as well. Um, and how long have you been at DMU, Saeed? Yeah, I came to the, I started last year, last year. Yeah, and cool. ever since I've really had the nice time, the faculty is amazing, the facilities, the lecturers, they're very, everybody is accommodating, not just at DMU, but in the whole of Leicester. Love that. That just makes me really, really happy to hear. And it's a perfect segue as well um, into some information about our faculty. As you said, the facilities and our staff are great. Um, so I'm just going to call up a slideshow and then just take everybody that's watching through a little bit of a journey about our faculty. I like to say our faculty is all about curiosity um, because it is a diverse faculty. Within our faculty, we have three schools. So we have the School of Computer Science and Informatics, where Saeed's from. Um, we have the School of Engineering and Sustainable Development. And then we have the Leicester Media School, which was where Philip was based. So three quite diverse and quite distinct schools. But what that common theme is that runs through them for me 
is all about curiosity. It's about asking those questions. It's about thinking about the future. How might we, we operate in the future? What technologies might we use? How might we tell stories? How might we build things? How might we build things sustainably as well? Um, so really interesting combination of subjects, um, which is shown a lot in the work that we do. We go on to the next slide and you'll see a lot around um, the, the qualities of the, the faculty. Amal, if we could just skip the next slide, if that's okay. Perfect. Um, and this kind of outlines a bit around our research culture. And particularly for postgraduate students, it's really important um, that you kind of have that awareness of the research culture. Um, we are very recognised for this. We have great international research and also a real growing community of postgraduate students. Um, students like Saeed saying he's already got his eye on doing a PhD with us. Um, so working to really answer those big questions going forward and finding new knowledge. We have great success in research grant income. So we bring in a lot of money. We're awarded a lot of money to really interrogate these problems. Um, and we also published extensively as well. Our real focus is on working to resolve the world's biggest challenges. And as we get onto it, we'll hear a little bit more about some of those things um, that we go through um, and, and the questions that we're answering. Um, a few other examples, if we move on to the um, next slide, where you, you get to see about that research impact. Um, and the next two slides will give you some examples of this. There may be some of you interested in cybersecurity, um, in which case you'll be very pleased to hear, as I am, um, that we were named a gold standard academic centre of excellence for cybersecurity. And that was by the National Cybersecurity Centre, which is part of the, the government's GCHQ. We were the first university in our area to achieve this prestigious status. It is something that we're really proud of and it's really reflected in the work that we do. We're also ranked very, very highly um, across other institutions across the world um, in computer science, engineering and technology, particularly with those computer science courses rated fourth in the UK um, for citations. And then many of our projects are global too. Um, we have a great partnership in engineering, which is really helping foster innovation and entrepreneurship across the sub-Saharan Africa and um, energy sector. And that work is impacted in the students as well. And I always talk about our Engineers Without Borders, which is a really, really incredible scheme, which our students all take part in. And they work um, to, to come up with solutions for different challenges every year. Last year, we came second um, across nearly a thousand entries, um, something again that we're really proud of. But I think most importantly, it's showing that our students have that real world impact in the work that they're doing. And that's right from undergrad to postgrad to our, our research and our PhD students too. On the next slide, you'll see um, some more information about our researchers um, and the impact that we have whether it's from working with the World Health Organization um, or government um, qualities, co government committees. Um, so lots of different impact that our staff uh, are having, which is then all really important for our students. You know that you're learning something relevant, um, something really important and something that is having great impact. The next picture really shows um, on the next slide, really shows that diversity um, across our schools. We've got racing cars, we've got studios, we've got gaming um, suites. And I'm sure um, Saeed as well, um, as Philip will talk a bit later about some of our facilities. We do have great facilities and they're spread all over campus, um, which is quite interesting. Um, we're not a huge campus, I don't think, um, and we are spread around it. And we have some great buildings, um, some really great um, facilities for our students to use. Um, so hopefully we'll be welcoming you soon and you'll be able to see all of that. We go on to the next slide and I'm going to touch briefly on our new approach to teaching and learning. Teaching excellence 
is really important to DMU, making sure that our students um, are, are, are working, um, having relevant teaching, that we're looking out for their best interests, and we're making sure that you succeed in your time at DMU. So with that, we've been reframing our offer and we've been looking at how we can teach in different ways. This will impact students at different times. So if you are looking at postgraduate entry and you're starting this September, it won't impact you. If you're looking and you're preparing ahead, it will have an impact from next year. Basically, our teaching is changing and we're, we're taking on something called um, the block approach where students study one module at a time. So rather than juggling three or four modules, you'll be working on one, completing that module and the assessment and then moving on to the um, next module. It's something that we've developed after really extensive feedback from our current students and our perspective, our perspective students. And it's something that will really help students manage um, their learning um, in your ever increasingly busy and complex lives. So there's more information about that on the website um, and it'll be worth checking in with that to see when it might impact you. If we skip the next slide and then we can go on to a bit more, if we go on to the next one, please, um, about our faculty and the makeup. And this is really interesting, I think, when we have a look at the size of our faculty. And it is quite big. Um, we have more than five and a half thousand students in the faculty, and that's quite evenly spaced amongst the three schools, um, computing, engineering and media. We have around four and a half thousand undergrad students, so students studying um, at an undergrad level and then nearly a thousand postgraduate taught students. So there are master's students um, of which a lot of you may be. Um, and then we have close to um, 200 research students. So those research students um, are studying generally for a, a PhD, um, a doctorate, um, and engaging in some of those projects that I mentioned earlier. If we go on to the next slide, and I want to spend a little bit of time now thinking about what happens when you finish. Um, when we bring in Philip and Saeed, they might want to talk a bit more around the careers and employability support that they had. Um, already we know Saeed is wanting to stay to do his PhD. Um, Philip carried on from his undergrad to his postgrad. Um, but there is a lot of support for you in your time at DMU when you're thinking about what it is you might want to do. And it's really important that you do start those conversations early on. And it's really important as well that you take advantage of everything that DMU Works has to offer. Um, there's lots of information on the screen now around our careers service, um, what they do around offering one-to-one -one advice. They might be giving you employability skills, helping you search for jobs, the best places to be looking. Um, or maybe you're a bit short on work experience and you might want to be getting additional skills to really help your applications as you go. The same goes for CV writing. And CV writing can be really, really challenging at times. Um, so we offer those support um, um, people that will help you as you develop your CV. And the same goes for assessment centres and psychometric tests. A lot of that needs, you need practice. You need to be able to have that experience. Um, and our careers and employability service really help with that as well. There's lots of different networking events, particularly within our faculty. Um, we have quite a number of societies um, as well related for networking, um, whether it's the racing, whether it's the media companies, the radio, gaming, um, various um, societies as well. But the career service also provides a lot of networking events um, to help you meet um, leading employers within the industry. 
on our next slide there'll be some information about a placement year um so we'll um we, we'll skip that i think um because i'm not sure if we'll apply much um to to this audience um but there is lots of information there on the website around our placement years um it is really important that kind of experience that you get, um, whether it's short term placements or work experience. Um, and we do find a huge impact um, in success from our students that have gone on um, and taken up those work experience um, or short term placements. On the next slide, you'll see a whole host of different companies. Um, where where our students go and work um, many of them will probably be very familiar names um, some of them not so much maybe um, but i imagine a lot of them are um, which is where some of our students um, are, are spending their time working um, and then on the next slide um, you will see some highlights of our students um, I always think it's our students that really sell DMU the best. I can talk for ages about what a great faculty it is. And it really is a great faculty because of the staff, because of the facilities, but most of all, because of our students. And you'll hear that firsthand in a minute from Philip and Saeed. Um, but some of the students here on um, the screen are some of our success stories. And we can update this all the time. I could have hundreds of students on the screen, um, which is testament to how much success they have. Um, you'll see Ben Bolton, who was studying cybersecurity. Um, he came through clearing. So he came when he got his results. And he's led now um, to a job with Jaguar Land Rover, which is great. Um, we've got other students um, who have secured jobs with Vodafone after um, studying uh, mechanical engineering. Um, and then Annie Green, um, who's one of the news editors at Sky News, um, probably quite busy at the moment. It's been a very busy time for the news industry, um, particularly over the last week. Um, but she's come back to campus a number of times um, to talk about her experiences and to really help our students. Um, on the next slide, um, you'll see some other industry partners and also accreditations. And this is particularly important um, for students when you are choosing an institution. Um, it can be really, really difficult um, looking for an institution, finding the right fit, um, the one that you feel is best for you. Um, and it's often really important to have a look at things like accreditations um, and also partners. Um, we work very, very closely um, with industry. And that's important for us for a number of reasons. Um, one of them is making sure that our curriculum is relevant, our curriculum is right, that we're teaching the students everything that you need to ensure that you will be successful when you finish. Um, so it's making sure that, that our teaching is spot on. And we do that through things like industry liaison committees, um, where we have boards of committee of industry um, representatives that come in and help look at our curriculum, that engage with us on developing new programs, new modules um, and offering their insight. It's also really important to help you. Um, a lot of the time students will come to us and they won't have that network. Um, why would you um, of potential employers and people that you want to work with? So we work really closely with our partners to make sure that we can set up those networking events, um, give you the opportunities to hear directly from companies that you want to go and work for, get advice, make contacts and um, things like that, which is why working with industry is so important. We also have a number of accredited courses, whether it's via computing, in media or in engineering. Some of those are on the screen there. And that ensures as well a, a kind of kite mark, that, that benchmark of standard of quality um, that's really important for you to, to see as well. 
So on the, the final slide, and, and I'm hoping Philip and Saeed are going to answer this exactly perfectly for me um, when I bring them in next, is why would you want to come to our glorious faculty of computing, engineering and media? And it's for a whole number of reasons. We do have fantastic facilities and great staff as well. Um, we have that focus on employability. We're all driven to create that positive outcome for all of our students. There's many international opportunities, um, but most of all, it is a really, really great student experience. Um, I'm very, very lucky to work here and work with such great students. Um, and there is so much um, that I'm sure they're all going to want to talk to you about now. So. If I bring you in, um, Philip and Saeed, um, and I'd like to start by asking you why you wanted to apply to DMU for the course that you did and why you picked DMU. Um, Philip, I'll start with you first. For me personally, uh, the course I applied for um, international film production it offered something that as i'm currently aware of no other university in the uk did as where um i was studying film for three years and um with the dream is you know work in hollywood or do something practical with film and when i was researching what other universities it seemed that a lot of them were primarily sort of theory and academic based DMU, however, their postgraduate degree, um, their assessments were primarily um, practical based. So you worked on your own short film in a group or um, individually, um, or um, I had to resort to plan B because of COVID, but plan B was also writing your own feature length script, which um, I did and I graduated with. So that course that DMU offered was, as far as I'm concerned, completely individual. And um, yeah, it was no argument about it really. That was the only course I was interested in taking. Okay, fantastic. And Saeed, how, how about yourself? You came here last year. Why did you choose DMU? I think one of the main reasons why I choose DMU is actually because of the course. A lot of universities do offer intelligence systems, which is another name for artificial intelligence. But very few universities in the UK offer put artificial intelligence and robotics. And then that was one of the things that caught my attention with DMU. And then immediately after I started going through the modules, I started seeing the, uh, the components of each modules and how every module was delivered. And then that actually was the, thing, the main things that got my attention with DMU and then I kept going because I didn't, mostly if you're coming, if you're applying for universities in the UK, usually work with agents, but I didn't work with any agent at first. I was going through the courses and seeing all the models and I kept reading the success stories for, that is available fully on the website for anyone to check. And then that was, I for me, I think those are the reasons why I chose DMU. That's great. And so much so that you obviously want to stay with us a bit longer as as well. Um, I want to ask about the support. So I touched a little bit on things like careers and employability. Um, but what kind of support have you received um, as, as say, an international student for you, Saeed, um, and a postgraduate um, student? Can you tell us a bit about the support? Oh, yeah, the support has been fantastic so far. All the lecturers, the, all my lecturers so far have been very supportive. Um, each student, when you're at DMU, each student has a personal tutor. So I didn't even get my visa on time because there was delays in applying for the visa and getting my class. But as soon as I got to the UK, the first thing, the first, my first point of support was my personal tutor. He guided me and gave me instructions on how to adjust in the community. And then there, there was a time that I started, um, I had issues with ADHD, and then I discussed with disability support um, community. And then so far, they really guided me. 
And then, so, and then the reason why I actually decided to go further and start considering a PhD, because I didn't even intend to consider a PhD until I got to DMU. It was a lecture that we, I was discussing, and then I was explaining my idea of, the post, uh, of my dissertation, and he was like, oh, look, this is a very good idea. This is something that you can actually go further and try doing it in in the PhD level. And then so far he has guided me on the things that I would do that will help me secure funding for PhD. So yeah, the support system in DMU is very fantastic. Everybody is ready and willing to, I have had career support from UNITEMS and DMU Works. I have had a lot of support so far in that DMU and I'm really happy about that. Great. That's really, really good to hear um, the support, but also the the delays that you had with your CAS. And I know in, in the comments, there's a few people talking about um, querying their, their CAS and, and that, that process. Um, so if you are one of those, there's an email address um, in the chat. It's just on the screen as well now, um, admissions at dmu.ac.uk. Um, so if you do reach out to them, they'll be able to help you um, with any questions queries around the CAS. I know it can be quite complicated. There can often be um, a, a number of delays and it can be, be really difficult when you're waiting to hear. Um, so I understand that. So do reach out to admissions um, at dmu.ac.uk and they'll be able to help you. Um, Philip, it, over to you. And, and can you tell us about the support? Um, what kind of things really stood out to you being a student at DMU as a postgraduate student? Um. Well, I think I'll just echo what Saeed said. Um, my tutors were an enormous help. Um, I think I was an assigned a personal tutor, but as the course sort of went on, um, I felt completely comfortable not only going to one, but going to both of them, having um, whatever meetings or shared emails with them whenever I needed help with my work. Um, when COVID hit halfway through my course, we were due to start filming um, a short film that I'd written. And of course that put a stop to that. But um, as we went into lockdown, I still maintained a communication with both Reese and Rachel, my tutors on the course. And they were perfectly happy to um, have a, a Zoom call with me every few weeks and keep me updated with what was going on or the changes in assessment that was uh, going on, or the latest communication. So the tutors as far as i'm concerned with like almost the best part of the course is where they were there whenever i needed them and uh, they were able to offer help and answer any questions that i had at the time um you mentioned i think that the dmu works and um that earlier i remember getting um after after submitting my final assessment um and thinking a right that's sorted now i can enjoy a beer and i can relax but then the next day is like oh what do i do now and i still ended up getting regular emails from um dmu works about um uh, courses that i could still sort of apply for and join uh, workshops i do remember there was one that was in a partnership with netflix and sky that i applied for and what they were looking for was just like an example of my work and they provided like uh, feedback if i pro if i um they they would invite you onto the writing team as well it was something for for me like a postgraduate it was almost like a dream it's like this is how i'm going to get into it and uh i wouldn't have heard from that without the email from dmu works i still get them now and it's very interesting to see it's like dmu has this going on over there and then i can email off over there as well so yeah it's a it's a gold mine of information when that comes in yeah there is a a lot of information and, and support absolutely and um, what's been your best experience or the best opportunity um philip i'll ask you first uh best experience um all right two things um one was the guest speakers that we had come onto my course. Um, I remember two, uh, we had one guy who came in twice and another fellow who came in once. Um, it was this one guy who he had said that um, his day job was um, working in a call center and doing 
um, making calls to people um, with his business, but then he decided he was tired of that and he wanted to do something different. So then he decided to get it uh, getting into uh, filming commercials and doing his own short sort of short films. So he got himself uh, all the fit, filming equipment, lighting equipment, and he came in with all of it that we got to have a go with. And we ended up like refilming a scene from The Matrix. I mean, it, it, it was insane. Um, another, um, the other fella that we had in uh, gave us sort of similar exercises in terms of like, how would you go about filming a commercial for DFS? How would you go into um, filming like this sort of gothic scene with the skull um, and stuff like that? So um, let's put our thinking hats on with that. So that was sort of really great interaction between people who are actually in the industry um secondly i think it was the sort of uh, collaborative aspect as where um as i said in the second semester we had to film um a short film with a script that one of us had written um and then it was left up to us to make so we had to find actors and actresses we had to you know, find the location um dmu gave us a budget for the film as well, I think every student got uh, £330 that we all pulled together to make the film. Um, and then the final thing was that we would um, film a short film of our own and we would use the people on our course to sort of help out with that. So it is a good sort of baptism of fire for um, what you would go on to do later on. Um, so if there was any mistakes that you had to make, universities at the time to make them so then you can go into any field with complete confidence so yeah that was uh, two of my best bits i think two of the highlights i say that a lot university is the time to make make all of those mistakes and to try and and try new things and especially when there are so many other opportunities as well so not yeah. just on your course but but try everything um Sa saeed what what about yourself what's been your best experience so far well, I think my best experience of her is I'm, I'm actually I'm actually very interested and very excited about the entire artificial intelligence area. And then so far my best experience is related to a cost model that I was that I successfully carried out. The um the cost work that is. So um I had I was able to actually develop and simulation for a robot system to have it complete tasks that is required by um, that is required so that was actually it was two robots not just one i had before coming to the i had zero experience with simulation or anything that has to do with robotics although yes i did have some back programming background but it wasn't that advanced and I'm getting to DMU, I just saw myself, now I'm doing things that I never imagined that were possible. I never thought that I would be able to design a neural network, a working neural network with accuracy. I, I believe most artificial intelligence students would understand where I'm coming from. So I would, so right now I'm able to design neural networks. I can do, like for my master's project, I'm thinking of designing a convolutional neural network that is going to understand it's that it will help an autonomous vehicle understand its environment to map and localize itself in that environment. So these are so far are my, are my exciting parts of being, DM, of being at DMU. I, I get to do things that I never thought where I was able to do. You know, it's kind of exciting for me to because I came here for a purpose and the main purpose is to understand the whole concept of AI, to understand the whole concept of robotics and then look at me now a few months down the line I can successfully say that at some point yes I can do some I understand I have better understanding of the entire AI and robotics field and then I can actually do things that are related in the AI and robotics with that I feel that yes, I am confident that if I should go into the uh, market, I can actually market myself and I, I, if I'm given any tax, I feel that I can successfully carry out that tax. So, this, so far, this is my exciting part of being at DNU. 
That sounds great. Um, I don't think I understand all of it, um, but it sounds absolutely incredible. And I know there's some some computing and so, some artificial intelligence um, students, perspective students on the call who I'm sure will understand it all and really yeah. excited by it as well. Um, final question then, Saeed, what's the best bit of advice that, that you could give to a fellow international student ahead of them arriving in the UK? Well, the best advice I'm going to give you is I see a lot of people complaining about cars and not receiving their cars. Before I can advise you, I would like to let you know that that shouldn't be a problem. Yes, I understand the pressure of wanting to see that you've gotten your tax because that's like 50% of getting your visa. But no matter what, you shouldn't, that shouldn't bother you a lot because there are, there are procedures and places that would at that, that will handle such situations. When you get to the UK, you would have, there, there are a lot of support that you're going to need. There are a lot of, and another thing is that you should consider, as soon as you get, you should consider joining the international community because that will help you adjust in the environment. You're going to meet new people. And I can assure you that DNA is a welcoming environment. There, it, there's a lot of cultural diversity, not just DNA, but in Leicester in general. So. That is, you sh as, as long as an international student, you shouldn't worry about adjusting in game. There are a lot of procedures in place that will help you enjoy. So just take your time, do things one step at a time. And when we get to the end, there are, don't worry about the classes you've missed, the models you've missed, which is another thing. If you feel you've missed a lot of more, a lot of classes in your model and you feel you cannot, you cannot cover in time, don't ever worry about applying for deferral. That is one system that is going to really help you, and that has helped me so far. If you feel you're having issues in your models, you're not understanding, it's a bit complex, you can defy your coursework. And after you, when you defy your coursework, you get six months period to be able to complete your coursework. That would give you time to take the coursework one step at a time. That would give you time to be able to adjust in the community whilst trying to adjust with the uh, with the models and everything at the end. That's great. Really helpful advice, Saeed, and, and good re reflection on your own experiences. I'm sure will be really, really valuable um, to, to those on the call um, today. There, there's lots of questions around um, CASs, like I said. So, so do make sure you contact admissions at dmu.ac.uk. A few other questions around the, the fees and scholarships. Um, do look at our web page, which details all of that it has all of the information that you need. Um, that's on the international page, um, fees and scholarships and international scholarships. So do take a look at that page and you'll find lots of information. Um, and if you've got any queries and um, inquiries about where you're up to, you can use our inquiry at dmu.ac.uk as well. Um, Within the information that came out, there was lots of other things around um, events happening um, today um, and other ways that you can get information. So do check out that email where there will be lots of information um, then. Um, so thank you for all of those questions. Um, we will make sure that we, we put in the, the links and the, the answers um, in the chat for you. Um, and thank you so much um, to Philip and Saeed for, for really having great insights, um, talking so well about your experience, um, why you came to DMU, um, and that, that crucial advice um, for the other international students who are looking at joining us, um, Saeed. So thank you very much for that. Um, if we weren't able to answer your question live, um, do email us um, another email address for you. Um, this one is chemmarketing at dmu.ac.uk. We'll pop it in the chat as well um, and we'll get back to you um, if you've asked a question and we haven't got around to it um, today. It's on the screen at the moment, but we'll try and pop it into the chat as well. 
that's all we have time for today um, I always tend to go on a little bit um, with these because I just want to carry on talking to our students um, and our, our alumni as well um, and, and keep them talking but I will draw to a close now um, do stay online um, as I said in the email um, for the day there's other live streams coming up um, and you can access those and that will give you lots of other information about being a postgraduate graduate student, about international student life, about finance um, and all those other questions that you may have. Um, so do stay online and I'm sure we will see you um, in one of those other events later on today. So for now, thank you very much for joining us. A huge thanks to Saeed and Philip for their insights as well. So from all of us here at DMU, thank you very much. And we hope to see you in Leicester very, very soon. Thanks. Goodbye. Thank